So this is uh, SAE. I bet you the uh, the Dutch, they don't like making this because they think we're idiots. <laughs> You can see we've made some progress. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. We started pushing this. Uh, with all the tools and all the drawers and everything in, this sucker is not moving, not a, not a millimeter. And so we got all the, all the drawers out, all labeled, ready to put back in place. But we've been shoving on this whole array from side to side, to try to get it where it belongs. And then we'll put the closets in at the end. So we're going to have a little bit of an issue here. Anyway, that's what we're doing. Come help me move this. <laughs> All right, so we would get this. There's two holes that line up with the with the uh, wire chases or whatever those things are called here. So we were able to get those lined up so the back locks in. And then we got one more down here somewhere. Yeah, right here where we can lock the front to make sure that the front lines up. And man, we've got it perfect. This is great. We got this all set up, closets in, cabinets in. So now we're gonna do, I'll put our drawers back in place. And so notice these are ball bearing, ball bearing glides. They're, they're not, um, to be honest with you, the, the Sabre drawers are better. You know, they're a little bit more stout, they're thicker. But like I said, fit and finish is what this is all about. Really nice, really good quality. So you get a little bit of, tiny little bit of slop in this that you won't get with a Sabre. Now Sabre will be a little harder to pull. The other thing that's nicer about this is one of the complaints people have with Sabre is that you'll get caught here, you know, because their handles stick out. So one of the nice things about this setup is that it's flush. So to get these to come out, all you do is this tab is up, this tab on the other side is down, and the drawer pulls out, and that's how you remove them. So what we're gonna do here is mount the countertop. Now, this is a 52 inch. They don't make a whatever, whatever 100 plus inch this, this countertop would be. This fits really nicely. There's a little lip on the bottom. I'm assuming it's either plywood or MDF, or it's, it's probably MDF. There's an MDF core and uh, in, inside, and then this is whatever D316 that's, you know, that's, that's rolled and mounted on top of that. And so they supply some eight millimeter bolts, or screws, and then there are, you can see the holes in the top of the cabinet. So we'll just pick four of those holes, probably the four. We're gonna pick the four in the center and we're gonna mount. So we got it nice and flush. We have everything pretty well square, so it fits pretty nicely, pretty, pretty tightly. And one, one of the things, I'm not sure why Sabre, Dean at Sabre does this, but on his counter, on their countertops, very similar to this, same basic idea, uh, but they leave, he leaves a gap, a tolerance gap. Uh, I guess these maybe are a little bit more precision built, so we don't really need that. Uh, I'm just simply gonna line it up and let it rip. And then these, these again are supplied. Simple as that. And then this, you know, putting these in just pulls everything together. Nice. nice and square and tight. So I'll go through and mount the rest of them. And that's the, that's the countertop. All right, so we wiped it out. So they come with these. These are really nice. I've never seen a, a shelf mount system like this. So it's a little, little I guess this will be aluminum, feels like, maybe steel. And so I'm gonna figure out where to put. I think maybe I'll do something like this. I'll probably never have anything in this cabinet, so we'll see. But it comes with two separate shelves. I'm gonna check this out. It's just nice, just smart. Everything's just smart about this thing. And it's got little rubber feet here. Um, I think maybe it goes the other way. Yeah, that's how it goes. Wow, that's pretty slick, man. And there's that, and then the doors. There's no real assembly. They just, this, this piece here sits in. 
little hole. And then this pulls down so you can easily quick release the doors. And then there's a little magnet, magnet right here. Boom. And then each shelf comes with a little, little pad to keep from jacking it up. Cabinet. I normally wouldn't even do this kind of cabinet, but I wanted one so I could see, you know, see what, what it was like, take pictures of it for people. Plus, I mean, how many drawers do you need? So here's how these go back in. So I'm going to go put all these back in place. And then we're going to work on the uppers. All right, so here's our shelf mounting system. So you know, just like the other lower cabinet, we put those and then those tabs connect here. So there we go. And I'm sure I'll be adjusting these and playing as needed. That looks pretty sharp. Well, all right, so these are our uppers. This is a 26 inch upper. So these do have different keys for each cabinet. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's what they got. So these don't slide in. At least I don't think they do. No, they're fixed. All right, so we've got our small bolts up here with our washers. So you put the top ones in because there's a hole. If you can see that, there's a hole here, but the hole is smaller. And so what this allows us to do, take it up like so. Slide it in place, okay? And then we can take, and these are the small hardware, the small pieces that come to the kit, and these slide in. So this might be the trick. We might have to wait, put these all in before we tighten them up, torque everything when it's all aligned. You know, because there are some, some of these that will connect the two. All right, we're wrapping this up here. Last step is the toe kick. So there's a couple of, uh, I wonder if it makes sense. I wonder if these go in first, like this. Nope, don't do it that way. Oh yeah. And then the side, this one here goes on the side, like so. We'll do one more for you and then I'm gonna roll through these. Here's the 26. This is a really nice touch. I mean, I wouldn't, probably wouldn't even have thought anything of it if they didn't have these. But now that I see it, I'm like, man, this, this is a, makes the fit and finish even nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna go around and do the toe kicks for the whole thing. So now comes the fun part. I get to unbox, unwrap all of these drawer inserts. So awesome. This is the whole reason I bought these darn cabinets was because of this. It's so nice. I guess they have to leave a little bit of room. I wish it was flush, but, but look, take our screwdriver. This is our Z1, Z1, Z.1, Z.1. What's up with that? Shoe. I'm shipping, I'm gonna get these all sonic up. I'm gonna be sitting here obsessing over which drawer this stuff goes in for the next six months. So most of the tools are gonna stay in these three in the center here. So I think I'll probably want, because I don't have, not all these drawers are full. So I think I'm gonna want all the tools there. So I spent hours and hours and hours more hours than any human probably should, figuring out what combination of drawers I needed to get to, to build a complete set. And so one of the value adds are gonna be able to help most of you if you're gonna buy Sonic tools, is that I'm gonna be able to help you figure out what you need. So the tools that I bought, I think I got 21 drawers worth of tools, it was like 9,000 bucks. You know, for that many tools is 
I don't want to say reasonable, but it's not snap-on money, that's for sure. Let's see, we have whatever these are called, the hex version versus the other version. I'm sure someone will yell at me what that is. Nine millimeter, 11. Somebody's messing with me here. 12, 13, 10, 11, 11, 10. Oh man, look at that. That's insane. And we got a little torque wrench. Calibration certificate. We don't need that. I trust them. I don't want to use any of these. I just want to look at them. Does it go that way? Yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah, look at that little sucker, that's cool. So this is uh, SAE. All you Europeans are, I bet you the, uh, the Dutch, they don't like making this because they think we're idiots. But the, I like how they make the SAE sets with a red bottom. I hope that uh, hope you guys buy this stuff from me so we eventually in the future can go to uh, go to Sonic and make all these inserts blue underneath. So I go from a janky set of tools to like every tool imaginable. Uh, I need to go get a stool. This is gonna be a while. This is half inch, seven sixteenths. See how it has like a little stepped up area? So that it, you don't have to jam your finger in there. It's funny, these give an illusion on the website that they're like flared out this way, but that's just the way it looks like in pictures. I love the finish on these tools. It's like a matte silver. In case I'm working on any, you know, large tractor equipment, I got inch and a quarter. These are all, I think I did inch, three quarter inch, not one inch. I think they have a one inch set, but I, I don't think I got that. I think I stuck with three quarter. Just in case we got something big we need to mess with. This is a, what a multiplier. Yeah. You never know. I'm telling you, this is the best part. This is the part of what I've been dreaming about. We almost need to do like one cabinet at a time and we take a break. Go take a nap, come back and reset. So I'm gonna go through these tools and uh, keep doing this. Look at that. <laughs> oh boy. And uh, I guess I'll have more input for you as we build the product out or build the product line out in the OG store. But uh, I'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. I'll probably go through the rest of this cabinet and then I'll show you, you know, what this looks like. We'll kind of wrap up our install video and then certainly I'll have more, more on this topic in the not too distant future. Because like I said, I, I intend to build out this entire product line and have it available so I can show the world about the awesomeness of this stuff. I'll be back in, you know, in real time, probably three hours, but on video in a second. Here it is, it's done. And I'm really actually pleased that the amount of time and energy, you know, it took to put this together, uh, me and Bryce and then, you know, my dad, uh, but, uh, you know, kind of different hands on deck, Chris helping unbox a little bit, but we, we probably have to build this giant array, which I'm guessing isn't gonna be very common in most people's garages, aren't gonna do this big of an array. Uh, it took, let's see, probably man hours, maybe 15. So, you know, a, a weekend worth of work if I was doing this myself to put this together from start to finish. Uh, so the, you know, the, the process of putting this together is much easier than Saber miles easier than Lista. I mean, that's part of the reason why I chose to buy this instead of doing Lista. A couple of, you know, the, the, the main reason was just the, the ability to put together. I just 
you know, a lot of list of stuff comes pre-assembled, but the stuff that you do have to assemble is just, it's just more difficult to deal with. A lot of it's the custom aspect of it, the custom part makes it more difficult. Uh, and they don't make a corner cabinet, and as most companies don't, neither does Sabre. Uh, so I still intend to, I'm gonna still offer Sabre as a lower end solution. This would be our mid to high end solution. And then I can't wait to get my hands now on, on uh, some MSS Plus stuff after getting an opportunity to play with this. So we're still waiting on, I'm waiting on a couple of, uh, of cabinet uh, countertops uh, and I'm waiting on the center cabinet, but uh, it's, this is the completed array. I mean, it is, it's sitting on the floor, but I mean, this sucker is stout and set up and, and, and ready to go. So just in wrapping up this video, you're, you're gonna see lots more of this, but let's, let's walk through uh, each, I'll sort of start on the left here and kind of walk through the cabinets and just stream of consciousness here, take you, take you through what's going on or what, what my thought process was. So I always like on cabinet arrays, I always like to enter it, corner it with a, or, or end it, terminate it with a, with a closet. And so they make a 36 inch, and I believe they also make a 20 inch closet. These are all fully adjustable with the exception of the top and bottom shelf, the very bottom down here. Uh, so this is, all, this is welded in, which I like, because this is where I'm gonna put my heavy AV gear. Uh, but these, I have them set up symmetrically. You can adjust them however you want. You have uh, about, uh, they're about, what, four inches apart. You can, you can move them, you know, up or down, depending on, on what, what's necessary. These, uh, an interesting thing, these are all keyed differently. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible. I don't think you can order these with the same key. Uh, I'm not going to lock them anyway. Don't tell anybody, <laughs> although I'm telling the whole world. Uh, but I'm not going to lock them, so it really won't matter to me. Uh, we actually, I was walking through Home Depot. We talked about this earlier in the video, but uh, this Defiant, uh, uh, these, uh, these power strips, surge protectors just happen to match exactly. And so I put one on the inside here of these. This is where I'll put uh, my AV equipment uh, for the audio system on this side of the garage. In future garages, I'm sure I'll do some big distributed audio system, but in, in this garage, I'm just gonna put some, some of my old AV gear in here and, uh, and I'm actually gonna have some Klipsch, Klipsch towers, a Klipsch center channel, uh, and Klipsch subwoofer, and then uh, B&K uh, amplifier, and that, you know, that's what we'll have in this, this, this setup or this garage, this location. Then from there, I wanted to do, you know, the main thing is I wanted to have the Jordan cabinets for all the tool storage, uh, but I wanted to test out some of the other lowers uh, since this is technically Obsessed Garage, a business, even though this is all my stuff and this is where I'm gonna be playing most of the time. I'd be doing this with or without the business, with or, with or without Obsessed Garage. Uh, but I wanted to do some different, different types of cabinets. This matches, obviously, the the, the closet here. Uh, these doors come off really easily by just pulling the pin if you wanted to remove the doors for whatever reason for cleaning or or I'm not sure why else you would, you would need to take them off but you could if you wanted to. And then uh, the stainless countertops. Uh, so this is the I believe 50, I think it's 52 inches or 53 inches. So it spans, yeah I guess it's 53 because it spans two 26 and a half inch wide cabinets. And then uh, we'll have a seam here. The seams on these are pretty tight so it'll, it'll, it'll still look great. I'll show you what the seams look like over there and then I'll have another 86 inch countertop. You have the, uh, the backing or the pegboards, which are, as you can hear, really stout, really solid. Uh, and then we have our uppers, which mount right to that. Uh, and so the uppers lift like so. Luckily, you know, I'm 6'2", so if you're 6'4", or higher, you're probably gonna end up bashing your head. Uh, but for me, it works. So, you know, again, I got a couple of inches, so I should be okay, shouldn't hit my head. And uh, now we gotta figure out what the heck to put in all these cabinets. I did the same thing here, so I did a, a power strip and just got some, uh, what did I put here? These are uh, just some metal screws, self-tapping metal screws. Uh, so we put these to hold our, hold our power strip on. What I think we're gonna do, you can see some shadowing under here since we're always doing product stuff, taking photos. I think I'm gonna run a strip of, uh, what is that stuff called, Philips Hue. Uh, since I already have the Philips Hue in the office there, I'm probably gonna do Philips Hue and we'll run this all the way across to help with you know, some of the shadows that, that we're experiencing here. 
but man, this looks amazing. So the main bulk of cabinets are either 26 and a half or 34 inches. Uh, these are 33 and a half. So they call them 26 and 34, uh, but look at this. This is what it's all about. I still have to do some tweaking of exactly where I want the products to go, or the, not the products, but the tools. Uh, where the tools to go. So I'm going to play with positioning of, of these. It's going to take me a while to teach myself where the stuff is, but oh my gosh, this is what, this is what I've been dreaming about. This, look at that organization. It's just amazing. So, so great. So in all total, I think I have 20 drawers filled with, with stuff. Uh, I have other tools and things that are going to be coming here uh, that obviously won't have the fancy inserts. I'll probably have to cut my own or have them have them laser made uh, for air tools and things like that. Air tools, electric tools, are, are things that I'm going to bring in here as well. Uh, we'll have all of our you know all of our polishing equipment and detailing equipment as well as you know just everything that I could dream of to put in here. I'm going to put it in the cabinets. So you have the 34s, the 26s. These are all keyed as well. It's 34 inch upper, so we have we have another upper. They make some other cool accessory things. I'm not gonna hang stuff here. I'm sure you could. Uh, I like my cabinets clean with nothing on them. If I had the choice, I would be I would buy this without the the uh, pegboard keyhole. Uh, but this, you know, I'm not a I'm not a fan of pegboard at all. But this I think looks nice. It looks industrial. So so I think we're we're good there. Looks looks good. 34 inch upper, like I just mentioned. Uh, these do not slide inward like some. I think list does slide inward. Uh, so that's a slight disadvantage, but the the piston is, is or whatever you call these things are nice. You know, they're slow open and then they're easy to close. And uh, solid, I mean, I could put whatever I want up here uh, if I wanted to do something on, on top. Uh, the center cabinet or the closet, I guess we have the five drawer here. Uh, so we have the five drawer. I just I wanted to add one of these. I don't think these are as useful as these cabinets. So if I were going to do a smaller array in my garage, I would do, do as, as many of these drawer as you can, as you can stand uh, because you still have the bigger drawer on the bottom. Uh, and uh, and then I would do or so I, I wouldn't do a lot of these unless you just happen to have a lot of a lot of tools. The problem with these 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 taller drawers for me is they tend to um, they tend to get uh, cluttered. You know, stuff piles up in them. So I wish in my wash bay uh, that I didn't do these type of drawers that I did these. And then I've got some other funky, you know, so this, they, they do some where you have three big drawers. So two really big, one medium, two smaller. So that's another cabinet option. You have the door slash drawer option. I did this in 34 inch. All of these, I think pretty much all of these cabinets come in 34 or 26. And then the really slick garbage. This for me will be less garbage and more uh, microfiber towels. So we have different sections inside of here that we can we can use. Uh, and then I did another power strip over here. I'm sure some of you that are using lots of power may uh, may want to put them elsewhere. I thought the edges would be fine because I have these Cox hose reels overhead anyway that I can grab if for some reason I need its power for something. But you know, I guess if you really were obsessed with having lots of power, you could do you know different sections and do something clean like that. Again, that company is called Defiant and they had it at Home Depot. It matches almost perfectly. It's a slight shade lighter, but it is darn close. And then I have a cabinet or closet on the other side here uh, where this will probably be where I'll put most of my microfiber towels and things. Uh, so now the fun begins where we get to start to work on what goes in all of this stuff and where. Uh, my center top cabinet should be here in a few weeks. Same thing with the countertops. A center channel is going to go up top here. Even though I'm not going to do TV, I have a center channel. I'm just going to put it up there. I mean, figure why not? And so I'll run all the, all the audio wires will run behind, behind the, uh, the, the cabinet array. Notice the toe kick, which I never even thought about, but the toe kick cleans it up all the way around the edge. But I mean, again, I'm 6'2", just the sheer size and scale of this is pretty incredible. 
These are just sitting here for now. These were just a couple of extra tops that they had uh, that came because uh, this is in a common cabinet. So they, they actually had these on their showroom floor. This and this came with the tops on them. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be, um, I'll be taking these and, and getting rid of those when, when the 86 inch span comes. Apparently it's not common for people to order the 86 inch top, uh, but I think it's, uh, I think it's something that a lot of people will end up using where, again, if you, if you had set up, you know, and if you set up and you did three cabinets wide with two closets on the side in your garage, then, uh, then you, you may end up needing, needing that type of top. So anyway, this turned out like to the T exactly the way I'd hoped it would. Like it literally couldn't have been any better. Uh, the, you know, the drawers are a little bit, not quite as stout as I would like, uh, but I think you'd have to pay, you know, you'd have to pay, you'd have to pay double to get, to get that. Uh, these cabinets have actually fallen in price by about 30, 35%, depending on which one from where they were originally. Uh, so the way Sonic has set it up is they lowered the price on the MSS line, and then they have, in order to fit in the MSS Plus line, which is the ultimate high end, uh, I'm now a dealer for both. I have full access to every product they sell. I'm pretty well versed in how to set up the tool sets now. And you can just buy them, but if you go in and you start thinking about which one of these should I buy, uh, I can help you think that, think that through, think through digging through their online catalog. And, uh, and it really helps me, helps me do stuff like this if you guys you know, support. Um, Sonic doesn't run sales, they don't run goofy pricing, um, so we're going to build out, Bryce and I are going to be building out the store to have it so you can one click on this stuff and I can make suggestions and I'll be making lots of videos on these and obviously these will be in the background of videos in the future. These will also be included in future Obsessed Garage headquarters when I, when I, when I move because <laughs> now we're jammed tight. Uh, this does, believe it or not, add some capacity because now I can fit a bunch of crap in these cabinets if I need to. Anyway, dream, uh, dream realized. I'm going to be playing with more drawer inserts and tools to put in. And so now that the steps of the coming videos will be talking about different air tools, different electric tools, and, uh, and sourcing the complete garage solution. We have the lift. I still have more work to do on lifts and, and educating myself and the world on that. Uh, we have more work to do. So now um, cabinets were a big step. Uh, next up, tools and more detailing stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting me and allowing me to do this stuff. And you know, as always, stay tuned for more crazy. I think this is a uh, pretty good example of it. Thanks for watching. force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, to the floor.